Today we are going to look at the InLab Partial software. Uh, so when you are in the InLab Partial Framework application, you'll know because in the top right hand corner, it'll say uh, InLab and then Partial Framework. Um, and so in the very first step here, you're in the prepare phase. So the very first step is to check the model. So the idea here is if you needed to change last minute uh, to select your active jaw, um, you could. Um, but if you already did choose this in the CAD software, it's going to default to that one, of course. Uh, the set model axis, again, if you already prepared this step in the uh, CAD software, you don't have to do anything here. It's a way for you to just double check your work. However, if you skip the step in the CAD software, uh, now you'll want to line up things like your midline and your occlusal plane. So be sure to kind of make any adjustments as needed uh, because this will be uh, utilized for uh, your design moving forward. So once you're happy with the positioning, you'll be able to move forward to the prepare model step. So the prepare model step is where you have the form tool where you can add smooth or remove material from the model itself. So again, just prior to design, you can make any last minute adjustments to the model. Uh, but the very first step here, define insertion axis that really is quite critical for the design of the uh, partial denture itself is the insertion axis path. So this is essentially where we're telling the software where the undercuts are located and the values. So on the lower left hand side, those are the values of those undercuts. So we're basically seeing with that arrow the positioning of how this uh, framework will go into place uh, once it's actually manufactured. So we're trying to minimize and control the undercuts as best as we can. Now, when we move forward to the check blockout stage, uh, the software is automatically going to block out for us uh, any uh, areas of undercuts that it identified. However, if we did want to remove the blockout or add to the blockout material with more, we always can as well as um, as well at that stage. Uh, when it comes to things like engaging an undercut, if you want to remove some of the under, uh, the blockout material that the software has proposed, uh, with the form tool you can remove um, as much material as required. Um, now, if you want to basically be able to take a look um, and see, you can kind of see the values of the undercut still below. The color map uh, is still showing up on the left hand side as well. Uh, so at this point, if you did want to, you know, add more material, you can set a max um, kind of wax distance if you'd like, um, but you can also remove. So if I want to smooth out some here, maybe have a little bit exposed uh, to, of course, be able to, um, you know, engage an undercut with a clasp and things like that. I absolutely can. <clears throat> So when we move forward to the design step, this is where we're going to have several elements that we can now plug into the actual uh, design itself. So things like the grid for where we're going to place the teeth, uh, grid bands, finishing line, tilt stops, clasps, base plates, lingual bars, connectors, clasp bar, and rests. Now there's a couple additional items that will uh, become available once we start designing. Uh, the, obviously the design has nothing currently attached to it, so that's why it, it defaults to just those ones there to start. Uh, but you can change things like the thickness or the lift uh, and actually be able to create um, all your different elements. So here we've got a lingual bar being attached at the moment. So we're identifying the thickness and the lift, lift referring to how much space between the ridge and the actual uh, lingual bar itself. Um, so you can always edit each of the elements as you uh, as you see fit and as you need to. Um, but at this point, I can continue to add my different uh, elements. So uh, here, if I want to add my grid for where my uh, acrylic and denture teeth are going to sit, I can now create the actual grid itself, attach it to my lingual bar. Uh, there's also several elements like connectors and things that you can utilize to connect these elements, or you can kind of overlap them to, to also create it that way. Uh, when it comes to the grid, you have the uh, ability to have holes on the border or no holes on the border, and then it defaults to circular squares. However, if you did want to change to square holes, you do have that flexibility, and you can control the size of the holes as well too. So when it comes to the drag line option, this is where you can uh, use the mouse to actually drag the line physically in or out, depending on obviously what you need to do for the line that you just proposed for the grid. Uh, now, if you hold your right cursor and move your mouse up or down, um, you'll be able to see that the highlighted area will increase or decrease accordingly. So if there was a certain surface area that you wanted to grab kind of all at once, uh, you're able to adjust the size uh, of your cursor accordingly. Uh, so that's utilizing uh, the drag line option. The other option is the edit line option. So which, in which case on the existing line, you double click with your left and then double click to finish. Uh, and it'll basically kind of edit that portion uh, that you've just uh, identified. So it's definitely a handy um, option here to be able to make any adjustments to the borders of uh, several elements that you start plugging into your design. So if you want to identify things like a, a clasp, um, you're always able to identify several of them. So if you wanted a ring clasp here uh, on the canine, you can kind of wrap around 
So by holding your left cursor uh, without clicking, you're able to kind of rotate your uh, model at the same time. Uh, and then single clicks will actually tag down the element itself. Uh, so here you can see that I, um, you know, slightly went kind of below the actual uh, uh, framework itself. So I'm just going to quickly edit my class here. Very simple to do if that happens. Of course, I could have deleted it and just redone it as well too. But, um, you know, just to show you that it's very easy to edit uh, if you haven't, if, you, if the software hasn't quite in, uh, taken to your click uh, of your mouse, you're still able to, of course, adjust accordingly. So I'm using the connector to connect all of my elements there together. And then I can do things like a class bar here to be able to have a, uh, a ring clasp as well too. And I get to control things like the diameter and, you know, the different thicknesses and things like that. So I can connect it to the lingual bar here so that my free end uh, quadrant four partial will uh, fit nicely in place here. So there's several uh, elements that you can, of course, you know, achieve by plugging in multiple different items onto your framework itself. So this would be the same way that you would normally do a wax up. Now, the partial that we're creating is the framework itself. You would still, uh, you know, either mill this or print this for casting purposes or mill it for alternative uh, metal options, things like, you know, uh, flexible partials, things like that. Um, in which case you would still do the analog method of uh, uh, processing your teeth. Um, but at this point you are getting the framework which is nice so when you move forward to the finalized phase it does become kind of like a metal uh, framework representation here um, so you've got the form tool where you can add smooth and remove material so if you needed to kind of adjust um, obviously like any smoothness or anything like that if this was an upper case if you wanted to add some surface pattern to the uh, lingual bar on the palette region you can add that surface texture uh, with the add material option, this is almost like welding at this point. You can kind of add more material to thicken uh, areas if you need to. Because uh, the bottom option there, you can check the thickness. So if there was any areas that are a little bit thinner um, or anything like that, you are able to obviously adjust it before moving forward to the finalized stage. Um, now, I would encourage you if you are 3D printing uh, for like casting purposes to add in a support tube. It just keeps the integrity of the entire arch as it's printing just because those materials can be a little bit softer. Uh, and then the final step would be to export the uh, framework itself with STL available.